Hello everyone and welcome to my Bachelor Nation 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. The Curse of Oak Island Preview. The guys discover a tunnel at the bottom of the garden shaft. This week on The Curse of Oak Island, the team believes they found the elusive tunnel at the bottom of the garden shaft. This must be the tunnel that stretches into the blob where the high concentration of precious metals is located. Last week, the Dumas Mining Company finally got to the bottom of the original working of the garden shaft at a depth of 82 feet. The plan was then to do some exploratory probing in the hope of hitting a secret chamber or tunnel. The bottom of the shaft lies just a few feet to the east of two areas nicknamed the Blob and the Baby Blob. Dr. Ian Spooner previously found through water sampling that these two areas contain so much gold, silver, and other precious metals that it's very likely a treasure is hidden there. The baby blob appears to be the most promising. It has an exceptionally high content of gold and silver and is a very manageable size of only 20 feet by 20 feet at a depth of about 80 to 120 feet. When the guys did some exploratory borehole digging into the baby blob a few months back, they get what they thought might be a tunnel heading toward the garden shaft. Oak Island team find a tunnel leading to the baby blob. Now, the team may have located the other end of the tunnel at the bottom of the garden shaft. A preview showed a smiling Scott Barlow telling the guys on his cell phone, We found our tunnel. This is potentially seismic news as it means the Fellowship should be able to follow this tunnel to the treasure. And they have mining experts, Dumas, to carry out the work for them. The History Channel's episode description backs up the above. Reading, Rick, Marty, and the team make a discovery below the garden shaft that could be the key to solving the Oak Island mystery. Isla 5 Stone feature the hatch from Xena Halpern's Templar map. In the meantime, viewers can also expect the guys to continue excavating the strange stone feature on Lot 5. The circular depression of buried rocks piqued the guys' interest when they learned it had similar dimensions to the original money pit. Apriga now suggests that the structure is far larger than the guys expected. Morty Lajanut is overheard, stating, It's quite a massive structure. And Jack Begley wonders if this could be related to Xena Halpern's map. This could fit in with Xena's map. This could be the hatch, he remarks. Xena was an expert on the Templar Knights and had researched the possibility that the medieval order visited Oak Island. She discovered a map of Oak Island, which she suspected had been created by the Templars in the 14th century. The map showed multiple features, one labeled the hole under the hatch, usually referred to as the hatch. However, the guys have never been able to decipher its meaning. As the dawn's golden rays caress the enigmatic terrain of Oak Island, a sense of anticipation hangs in the air, heavier than the morning mist. The island, long shrouded in mystery and whispers of lost treasure, is on the brink of revealing yet another secret. The Lagina brothers, Rick and Marty, stand at the heart of this unfolding drama, driven by an insatiable curiosity and a quest for answers that has captivated audiences for years. Today, their journey takes them to the bottom of the garden shaft, where a hidden tunnel promises to shed new light on the island's age-old enigmas. Rick Lagina, with his deep-set eyes that mirror the depths of the island's mysteries, stands at the edge of the garden shaft. The structure itself is an artifact of earlier excavations, a wooden relic that has witnessed countless attempts to plunder Oak Island's secrets. Yet today, it offers something different, a promise of discovery, a hint of the unknown. Marty, ever the pragmatist, joins his brother, his analytical mind racing with possibilities. The two exchange a glance, a silent communication honed over years of shared adventures and relentless pursuit. The team assembles around the shaft, their faces a mixture of excitement and trepidation. Gary Drayton, the metal-detecting wizard, 
brandishes his equipment with a gleam in his eye. Let's see what the island's hiding today, he quips, his British accent adding a touch of levity to the tense atmosphere. Beside him, Alex Lagina, Rick's son, checks the safety ropes and harnesses, his youthful energy tempered by the weight of their mission. The descent begins. Rick is the first to lower himself into the darkness, his flashlight cutting through the gloom. The wooden beams of the shaft creak under the weight of years, each sound a reminder of the island's treacherous past. Marty follows, his methodical nature ensuring every step is secure, every move calculated. As they reach the bottom, the air grows colder, the scent of earth and decay mewling with the promise of discovery. There, in the dim light, they see it, a tunnel, partially obscured by rubble and overgrown roots. The opening is narrow, barely wide enough for a man to crawl through. Yet, it's unmistakably a tunnel, its walls smooth and purposeful, carved by hands long gone. Rick's heart races. Could this be the fabled passage that leads to the money pit? Or perhaps it's another part of the island's intricate web of tunnels and booby traps. Gary joins them, his metal detector whirring softly. The device crackles to life, signaling the presence of metal. We've got something here, he says, excitement threading through his voice. The team works quickly to clear the debris, revealing an old, rusted lock. It's a curious find, suggesting the tunnel was deliberately sealed. The discovery raises more questions than answers. Why was the tunnel sealed? What lies beyond the lock? The team decides to proceed with caution, aware of the island's penchant for traps and pitfalls. They secure the area, setting up lights and cameras to document their progress. This is more than a treasure hunt. It's a historical investigation. Each find a piece of a puzzle that spans centuries. As they break the lock and push open the barrier, the tunnel yawns before them, dark and foreboding. Rick takes a deep breath and steps forward, his flashlight revealing more of the smooth stone walls. The tunnel is narrow, forcing them to move in single file. The air is thick with dust, every step stirring up particles that dance in the light. Marty keeps track of their progress, marking the walls with chalk to ensure they can find their way back. The tunnel twists and turns, a serpentine path that seems to defy logic. Yet, there's a sense of purpose here, a deliberate design that suggests this tunnel was more than a simple escape route. Hours pass as they navigate the labyrinthine passage. They find more clues, an old lantern, its glass cracked and blackened, and a piece of parchment, its ink faded but still legible. The parchment is the most intriguing find, bearing a map of the island with markings that suggest the existence of more tunnels, more secrets. Finally, they reach a chamber, larger than the tunnel, and filled with an eerie silence. The walls are lined with shelves, each holding artifacts that speak of a time long past. Coins, tools, and a chest bound with iron bands. The chest is the centerpiece, its presence almost commanding. Rick and Marty exchange a glance, their excitement tempered by caution. They approach the chest, their hands trembling with anticipation. As they pry open the lid, a collective gasp echoes through the chamber. Inside, they find a collection of documents, maps, and what appears to be a journal. The journal is written in a meticulous hand, its pages filled with entries detailing the construction of the tunnels, the traps laid to protect them, and hints of a treasure hidden deeper within the island.